Yes, you can start. Okay. So um, I'm Dr. TJ again. I'm really happy to announce another bug talk. And this time, this is with Gabby Gentry. Gabby has been working with me for about a year on some really interesting product insect work. Her work is based on some of her internship experiences that she had with the Alabama Department of Environmental Management and their water bio, uh, water bio monitoring team. So she developed a really interesting project based on her interactions with that group. So I'll let her take um, so I'm really glad you went first. She kind of gave you an overview on what biomonitoring is, the importance of insects in our streams, and how land use can affect them. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to focus on stone flies specifically and see how um, their populations have changed in the Cahaba River. Um, the reason that this is important is because there is a projection of 40% extinction for insect species over the next couple of decades. And this is especially important for stoneflies, who are very sensitive species. Um, so, part of why they are so sensitive, um, like she said, when forested areas that are around watersheds become industrialized or turn agricultural or become urban, runoff from these areas goes into the streams um, directly affecting them. Stoneflies specifically have very interesting life cycle. Um, they start as adults and they lay eggs in the water. They'll then hatch into a immature form known as a nymph, which is very similar to a larva. They will stay in this form for at least a year. Um, in other states, this goes on for sometimes three years. So for us, they have a year's worth of the effect of pollution on a single generation. So this um, also causes a lot of why they're so sensitive to things. Um, so also because of their life cycle, when we work with um, organisms, we like to be able to see multiple generations to compare. So in order to do that for stoneflies, we need a really long-term study. So we decided to focus on the Cobra River um, because ADEM had a 25-year span of sampling, and they sampled 36 sites, ranging all the way from above Birmingham down to Selma, where it connects to the um, Alabama River. Um, but I wanted to focus on a little bit of a smaller scale, and I found a tributary, which is a stream that flows into the main stem, that um, has a gradient in land use. It's near Montevallo, but it goes more into forested and agricultural areas. Uh, there were five sites along this tributary that um, I received records for, and I queried this um, amongst um, season and by site. So the first thing that we saw was that there were six families that were seen. Um, there were perlets. Um, these are the most common. They were found at every site. And they have a little bit higher tolerance than some of the rest. Then we also have blutridae, chloroperlidae, perlotidae, um, peltoperlidae, which are my favorite. Um, if you can see that they are the biggest ones on here, which means they're very easy to identify. So very friendly in the lab. Um, and then we also have nevoridae. That is by Kendall's tolerance values. That has the highest tolerance. It has a tolerance of two, which on a scale of 10 is still not very high. Um, so looking at season, we found that the most different types of taxa were found in June, but the most total taxa were found in May. So we're seeing most of the detection happen late spring, early summer, which is probably due not only to from their life cycle, but the fact that they like cooler waters, so we're less likely to find them in the later seasons. Um, we also found a lot of difference based on the site, and there was some sampling discrepancy. Um, they were sampled from 1993 to 2018, but a little haphazardly. Um, so we have a little bit of a scope of what the tributary looked like across all of the sites that we summary. Um, but the most change was found in sites that were farthest from Montevallo, so that's important. Um, I mapped the land use from 2000 to 2018, and here in the red is Montevallo, and most of the sites fall into this forested, the tan would be barren, and the yellow would be agriculture. So most of them fall into that area, while one site falls closer to Montevallo. 
Um, this side plus Guanabalu had the lowest um, number of taxes. And we saw a big change in land use for the most um, diverse sites. So these first two sites that had not only the most taxa total, but the most different kinds of taxa, saw a change of barren and agricultural land into forested land over the course of the time. Um, so from this, we can determine that at least there is some type of relationship between um, land use and stoneflat diversity. Um, but we need to consider when we sample um, on whether or not that detection is low. And in the future, we need more consistent sampling um, to have more definitive results. Any questions for our speaker? I really like the, I'm a, in the GIS department. I'm finishing up my master's degree, and I love the use of GIS in both of your presentations. It makes my GIS, GIS part happy. It's not easy. It's not GIS until you <laughs> Any more comments or questions? No? If not, then let's thank our speaker again.